Hello, uh, today I'm going to show you how to create a LoRaFor Stable Diffusion Excel using Google Collab and Kuhai Trainer Notebook. I already made a tutorial about creating LoRaFor Stable Diffusion 1.5 and you can check it out. And the process is uh, quite similar, but we're gonna use a different notebook for training it for Stable Diffusion Excel and it has uh, a lot of configurations and options, so it can be quite confusing. So that's why I decided to walk you through the process and uh, show you that it is actually very easy. So today we are going to create a realistic LoRa model that will generate a character from the Witcher uh, TV show Yennefer of Wangerberg. And this LoRa should consistently generate images that look like an actress that plays this role, Anya Chilotra. So let's start and the first step as usually is creating our dataset. Uh, okay, so here is my data set and I prepared uh, 12 pictures of Anya Chilotra playing uh, Yennefer in The Witcher and the only one picture is not actually her, it's just a 3D model. So I picked this picture because I like the setting and I like the outfit, uh, but other pictures are uh, hers and I tried to uh, choose um, different ones and I tried to choose a uh, high quality pictures with a good lightning. Uh, sometimes it was tricky because you know uh, in the movie there is a lot of scenes with like uh, low light and uh, in the darkness but well I did my best. So I picked these pictures and I uh, resized them uh, 1024 by 1024 pixels. This is the difference with the uh, pictures for the 1.5 LoRa. If, if you remember, we resized them to 512 by 512. For XL LoRa, we need uh, uh, bigger pictures. We need 1024 or maybe 768 by 768. It's up to you, but I prefer to go with the uh, largest uh, files. I think it will produce better quality LoRa. So I resized the pictures and then I also prepared the capture for them. So there are actually a few ways to create your captures. Uh, first, of course, you can do that manually. And again, the trick here is to describe uh, everything on the picture uh, with exception of the character itself and all the features that you want to be a part of your character. So for example, uh, when I am making the capture for this photo, I do not uh, write here uh, purple eyes or long black hair because I want it to be the part of my Laura. And I just write everything else. Uh, so I wrote um, like um, city, I wrote like a blurry background, looking at your outdoors, jewelry, jacket, and etc. But I did not mention in the capture uh, the uh, features of the character. And uh, note that uh, the first uh, tag that I have is en-vnbrg. Uh, uh, so this is my custom tag and all the features that I do not describe in this capture, in this uh, caption, uh, they all will be attached to this keyword. And then when you will uh, generate images with your LoRa, you should use this keyword to get the output that you want to. Uh, so uh, that's the trick about the captures. And again, there are a few ways to do that. Uh, you can do it manually, of course, and that's probably the uh, best way because you can like precisely describe what you want. It can be long and tedious, especially if you have a bigger data set. I have just 12 pictures, uh, so it's not that big and uh, still I didn't do it manually. I was using uh, this feature from um, uh, stable diffusion 11.11. So what I was doing is I was running this automatic 11.11 club and then uh, in this interface, if you go to image to image uh, tab, uh, and then you can just uh, drop an image here. Uh, and in this image to image tab, there is uh, this little button with a box. So if you click here, um, it will generate a caption and then you can just manually edit it and add and remove whatever you want. So it is a kind of half automated process uh, of creating captions. 
and it still lets you uh, to have some uh, control on it. Uh, so that's how I do my captions. Uh, but there is another way, uh, fully automated, and I'll show you it in a minute. So you see here, it, it generated me a bunch of the keywords, uh, generated the prompt for this picture, and then I just edited it and I added it to my data set. Uh, so, uh, prepare your data set. Uh, it should be uh, just an uh, image and a text file. Uh, the title of these images and files should be just one, two, three, and etc. whatever your uh, amount of images is. Um, and then when you're ready with that, when you prepared your files, um, then um, we are going to the second step of the process. And uh, for that step, we need our collab uh, notebook. Uh, this is the Kohai Laura Trainer Excel notebook. Uh, I downloaded it from Kohai GitHub and I will leave the link below so you can just go and download it yourself. I will also leave the link to the uh, saved file on my uh, Google Drive because you know the original file can change and it won't be working with my tutorial uh, at some point. Uh, and if you want to use the old one that I'm using now, you can always uh, just go and get it from my Google Drive. Uh, this is our notebook and it has few steps. And let's start running them. Uh, we don't need to run all these steps. We just need some of them for our case. So first step is to prepare environment and uh, you just hit this uh, little play button to run it and wait. It will take some time because it has to download and install all the dependencies for our uh, code to work. And uh, you may see some errors here, uh, but as soon as they do not affect the usability that like if you still can run uh, next steps, uh, just ignore them. So after you run this one, uh, you have to run the download SDXL. Uh, you will need your uh, Hugging Face token for that. Uh, so if you do not have an account in Hugging Face, just go create your account and get the token. Uh, actually, I can show you how to do that. So uh, if you go to Hugging Face, um, you see it already, I already have the link saved. So here is the Hugging Face. Uh, I am logged in. So you, you need to create account, you need to log in to the website and then you have to go to your account here in the top right corner. Uh, go to settings and here on the left hand side there will be a menu and uh, you need the access tokens uh, thing. So uh, you will uh, probably have no tokens here so you need to click on the new token and, um, and add a name, uh, enter a name like Laura, whatever. Uh, here you can uh, choose if you want to read or to write. Uh, for this case, you need just to read it. So generate the token and then you can copy it and paste it to this field. So this is um, my token and uh, I will delete it after I record this video. So don't use it, go and create your own token. So after you pasted this token here, uh, just hit the play button and uh, it's going to download the uh, model. Uh, so which model do you want to download? Because here we have a drop down with a few of them. Uh, I used just the Stable Diffusion Excel base because I want to uh, generate realistic images. If you want to uh, generate anime characters, then you can use this one. And the first one, honestly, I don't know what is this model and I don't care for this tutorial, but feel free to experiment. So I choose the Stable Diffusion Excel and uh, Original VAE. Uh, there are also a few different ones. Um, you can also choose Known. Uh, and I just hit the play button and it, it downloads my model. I actually have it already, so it doesn't take much time. Uh, then uh, next step is important step. It's the directory config. And by default in this notebook, uh, it was uh, like this, I think. Uh, so it didn't quite work for me. So I changed it uh, to the path that is uh, mine and my Google Drive. So I pointed it to this folder where I'm going to uh, store my data and also for every Laura I will add some uh, sub directory here. So 
uh, now uh, we are going to uh, my Google Drive and here I have this uh, Laura folder and in this Laura folder I have trained data and in this trained data I have few uh, subfolders and this one EN, uh, VNBRG is the one that I'm going to use for this Laura so I am just going to copy the name and I'm going to paste it here so uh, this is my folder with images and captions I already uh, copied them here and also notice I have this subfolder with like a name that is, starts with 10 10 is the amount of repetition uh, in training and uh, I actually think this is not necessary to name it like that but it's just a kind of a habit of mine to do that here I have uh, my files uh, and uh, if you didn't do that uh, still you need to create a folder and you need to copy your data set here now when you copied and pointed uh, this uh, path to your folder uh, hit the play here and it will uh, output this text that your train data di directory is this one then the next step image browser this is an optional step i'm not going to use that um, then uh, data gathering uh, this is for those cases when you don't have your uh, own data set and you want to use some prepared one ready one so this is an unzipped data set and uh, other stuff I don't use it in this tutorial uh, but if you want to try it feel free so we're just skipping the entire uh, part of this collab uh, of this notebook and the next step is data pre-processing data cleaning data captioning so uh, this is the third way of creating a caption for your uh, data set uh, and this is fully automated one so you can just hit this button and it is going to go through all your pictures and create captions for them uh, but I don't usually use it because I prefer to do it myself I prefer to have some kind of control on my uh, data set and my captions and uh, yeah I uh, leave it to you to choose which approach you take this is working as well uh, and you see I was trying trying this and it generated me some uh, captions like woman with a necklace and the man in the background and etc uh, but I didn't like them and I did my captions myself uh, so again I'm skipping this uh, data captioning and cleaning stuff this uh, waifu diffusion tagger I'm also skipping that we don't need this this uh, custom caption tag uh, you can use it uh, if you do not have it in your data set uh, if you do not have it in your files but I already added it here it is envnbrg uh, and uh, I don't need to run this uh, but you see I tried it for the uh, version 2 of my uh, LoRa and uh, yeah you can just append any tag for example if you are using this uh, automated uh, captioning you can just run this step afterwards to append your custom tag or to delete it if you want to delete it and again I'm skipping it for now next uh, bucketing and uh, latent caching uh, we are running this step this step is uh, for those cases when you have uh, images of different sizes and you need to create buckets for the training uh, and every bucket will be uh, grouped by the size it's throwing me some errors and I don't think they really uh, affect anything uh, sometimes it happens I don't know why uh, so whatever uh, next uh, part of the notebook is the actual training and that's also uh, an important part because uh, here uh, there are a few options that we can change and it will uh, greatly affect the quality of, of our LoRa uh, so uh, first part uh, LoRa low rank adaptation config uh, network category uh, you can choose them but I just uh, use the default one uh, then network arguments uh, this is optional we don't touch it and here the most uh, important thing is this um, network uh, DIM and network alpha uh, you can try different uh, values here by default it was I think 32 and 16 
Uh, and what they say that if you want to get the more realistic uh, images, you set it to like 108 uh, and uh, for example 96 here. Uh, but you can try different uh, values. You can try 64 and 64 or 32 and 16 or 64 and 32. So usually people, what people do, they try, they create different LoRa's with different uh, values in these fields and then they just compare them uh, which one is better for their particular case. So I want to get realistic images and I want to try this uh, LoRa with like higher um, values. So I will set it to 128 and 96. Uh, these uh, two I am not going to change, they are only required uh, for other LoRa categories and uh, I don't care about them. This one I also will leave as default one, so I'm hitting the button here. Next step, optimizer config, I'm not touching it at all. Uh, default uh, values are good enough for us, let's run it. We do not change anything but we still run it. And we go to the next step, advanced training config. Uh, this is optional. Yeah, I think we also not changing anything here. Um, yeah, we are using defaults. And now 4.4 uh, training config. This is an important one and uh, we need to insert a project name here. And my project name, just for the consistency, will be the same as my uh, custom tag, so it's yen vn brg, and uh, then uh, important thing uh, in data set config here by default this value is one, and oops, what did I do? Uh, I showed the code. Yeah, so by default <laughs> this one is one, and this uh, we have to change if we want to actually train something uh, meaningful. So I'm changing this to 10 and it is usually enough. Uh, but if you feel that it's not working for you, you can experiment, you can try 5, you can try 20, whatever. But just uh, remember that if you set here a bigger value, then your training will take a longer time. So uh, for me 10 is a kind of a compromise. I'm getting pretty good results here, uh, but it still doesn't take too long. I'm using Collab Pro, so it's quite fast. I'm not sure if you can do that on free Collab, uh, but if you're working uh, on your local machine or if you're using Collab Pro, then it's gonna be fast enough. Number of repeats 10. Uh, and a uh, number of epochs uh, are 10 as well. I, I think they are by default 10, so we do not change them. And another thing I change here uh, is uh, save every n epochs. So usually by default it is one, so it will save uh, LoRa for every epoch. And if you train it on 10 epochs, it will create the 10 files for you. And these files, like every uh, LoRa usually uh, is like, 600 megabytes, <clears throat> so it's just gonna clog your Google Drive and you don't want that. So I usually just set it to amount of epochs because I only want my last LoRa or you can set it to one and then just try different files to see which one is better. But I just want to use the last one and I set it to 10. Then uh, here sample prompt config, you can change sampler. Uh, I usually choose uh, DPM or KDPM2 uh, because that's the sampler that I will usually uh, use in my generations and if you prefer some other samplers just uh, feel free to change it. Uh, by default it will probably say Euler A uh, but I will leave this one. Uh, so it's up to you. They are also differ in the speed of a uh, training. Uh, so Euler probably is a bit faster. Uh, so here you can play around, you can try things. Uh, so custom prompt. Uh, custom prompt is for the image that will be uh, generated to test your LoRa uh, after all these uh, like epochs and repetitions will be done. So here to test your LoRa you need to add your custom tag. So uh, I go to my caption, I copy my custom tag and I add it here. So just uh, to see immediately if my settings worked, if my LoRa is doing anything. This is it for this config, so I am hitting play. 
and you see it it, it prints it out uh, oh yes and i forgot to tell that here in general config i also changed it from scale dot product attention to xformers honestly I don't know which one is better, I just used to Xformers one, so I changed it, but again, you can try different ones. Um, yeah, and uh, now when we configured everything, we can start training, and here we do not have to change anything, uh, so just hit the play button, and it will take some time, uh, again, it throws me these errors, uh, but it happens sometimes, it doesn't affect anything. Uh, yeah, so it, it, it usually takes about like 30-40 minutes for uh, my Collab Pro, uh, can be faster or slower for you, I don't know. And on these steps, if you see errors about uh, images not found or something, it means that you made a mistake on the step where you provide your um, directory config so if you get these errors just go to this step and make sure that your uh, path to the uh, data set is correct uh, because you know it can be something different for your google drive or it can be if you're running it locally it can be different directory so just check it so now we are just waiting and you see it uh, starts to uh, output some stuff and uh, now it starts to actually train you see it starts the first epoch uh, 300 steps uh, and yeah just wait wait for that and when it is ready you will see the output here okay so our LoRa is trained and you can see here the output uh, that our uh, checkpoint is saved to this directory and uh, if you go there uh, so it's a high trainer output and you see I've got here two folders uh, this one is the one just uh, that we just generated and this one I tried yesterday here we have our safe tensors file and we also have a sample sample is just a test image that we generated for the model uh, to check if it actually works okay this one is from yesterday uh, and this one is from now so let's see uh, and you see that with this default prompt for the girl with green hair and hat and etc uh, our Laura was applied and uh, the girl looks uh, a little bit like Jennifer uh, she has the same lips uh, same eyes and nose and like pretty much the same so it means our Laura works and all is good so now we can start using our Laura and how to do that so you see this file uh, Ian Wenneberg save tensors we just need to copy it and then it depends uh, what kind of UI you are using if you are using uh, automatic 1111 like I do then you should just go to your Google Drive uh, SD stable diffusion web UI and models and here you'll uh, have a lot of folders and you need to find the one uh, that is uh, LoRa and inside of this uh, LoRa uh, folder uh, you'll see other LoRa's that you have if you have any so you have to just paste your LoRa there and again I have the yesterday's one here so I'm going to just rename it Altered Old I don't want to delete it because it was quite a good one um, and I will just replace it I will just copy paste it here and this is our Laura that we just created let me just rename it as well uh, and now if you want to uh, start using it just go to your stable diffusion collab and um, restart it I uh, usually restart it because uh, sometimes it just does not uh, update the LoRa's here uh, so just to make sure that everything is updated I'm going to restart it and if you're using Comfy UI or if you're using your local uh, setup again you just uh, grab the file that was generated and uh, paste it to the directory with your LoRa's and that's easy like that you can start using it okay so our UI started and now if you open it you see I have this base model uh, safe tensors, uh, stable diffusion excel and if you click here on LoRa uh, you're gonna see your new LoRa here 
uh, and you see I have two of them uh, just yen and yen version 2 because I created two of them one with 128 and another with 64 just to test the difference to see which one is better so first let's try the one that we generated just now so I'm clicking on it and it adds this tag for the LoRa uh, to the prompt and then I go back to generation I will change sampling steps to 40 I will change here to 124 and uh, here not notice that I chose the same model uh, stable diffusion uh, XL base the same one that I used uh, to train the LoRa and now I'm going to paste my custom tag as well and now I can tell something I can write a prompt I really like the quality and I think the eyes are quite nice here and the dress and everything um, so I would say this Laura worked pretty well so now let's try uh, the one uh, the version 2 uh, that I generated later uh, and uh, I'm just curious if there will be any difference in the quality or in the similarity inconsistency to the with the uh, character so let's try to generate this one it's it has the same uh, custom keyword and everything is the same just the only difference that I set um, for the second Laura here instead of 128 and 96 I said uh, I said 64 for both uh, so let's see Uh, okay, this is the Laura with 64 and I think it is looking not like the actress. I mean, it still has some uh, similarity, but the uh, 128 one was better for sure. I mean, we can give it a try again and I also tried to remove the Jennifer from the prompt. Maybe it this still affects somehow uh, and let's... Uh, uh, let's change the prompt maybe let's try something else uh, for example Jennifer on the battlefield splashes of blood rage war armor red men around her and let's try okay i already can see that it's not even looking like her oh no now it's looking like her interesting uh for a second it looked like it's a man there but now huh, not bad so you see yeah it still kept the features it kept the necklace it kept it kept her lips uh, but i can't see her eyes they're not quite purple here um let's again switch the Laura and let's try the first one I'm just curious we could even for like for the uh, cleaner experiment we could save the prompt I'll do it in a moment now we are generating oh, not prompt sorry seed now we are generating with random seed but we can uh, try to do that with, with the same uh, seed but different Laura's just to see the difference Okay, again, it started with a picture of a, a, some random warrior and I guess it's gonna transform it now at some point, no? No, it didn't work for this one, strange. Okay, we don't have any for we have a... Uh, which... Okay, let's, let's change the prompt. Okay, now it doesn't really listen to, to the prompt, it just ignored most of the things but at least it uh, generated uh, the character so you see it's two different loras uh, generated with the same uh, data set but uh, the results they produce are different but yeah I'm, I'm still amazed with the quality and with the 
cinematic shots because you see it's even like the uh, picture is so grainy and like like it's really uh, looking like a movie frame so I'll just make a batch say, size 4 I want to generate a few more with this one and let's make her angry uh, okay you see it is kind of a hit and miss uh, it uh, created two pictures that are more or less similar to the original but other two the one of them has white hair and it's completely out of the place and another one just doesn't look like the actress at all but these two they are pretty good and uh, angry uh, impression on her on her face is, is nice I think the results with the Laura version 2 was better so I want to switch back to it and I will remove a witch keyword what was it in England in English woman magician on the battlefield surrounded by armored men purple eyes angry and I will change this uh, CFG scale to be like eight and a half maybe to follow our prompt better okay somehow it seems that the second version of the Laura works better with uh, uh, this setting but uh, because I said purple eyes it added so much purple everywhere in the pictures so I just want to play with prompt a bit and I'll remove some stuff uh, and remove a uh, magician uh, part because uh, I, I really like the initial picture that it gave me uh, with the simple prompt uh, so I just want to try it again maybe I'll get it uh, I'll get something similar because in these pictures I think she's a bit too fancy dressed for the battlefield but the one with the snow looks really good I I mean look at this like let me show just a picture uh, the snow the details and her like her look her in face a facial impression it's so good I mean uh, it's really hard to tell that it is uh, AI generated image it's it looks pretty much like a real movie okay now we are getting a more of a battlefield stuff uh, less witchery more uh, warriory um, as I can see on the preview okay let's see so the first one is uh, total miss um, but other three are pretty good uh, I especially uh, like the one with the sword but I mean it is with the sword and she's a, a magi magician so it's not really uh, close to the idea but the one without a sword it looks looks pretty good as well uh, so I'm going to just take this uh, seed of this picture so I'm clicking on this green icon to save the seed and again for just for a cleaner experiment I'm going to change the Laura now back to the first version and and try well I really like this Laura honestly I think I probably will even uh, post it on CVT AI because um, there are a few Lauras of uh, Yennefer there but I think mine is really good just need to decide which version um, but yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with that okay with the same prompt and the same seed they both are really good and it's hard for me to choose which one is better because this one um, I don't know this like the bottom two I don't like them much because the face is kind of malformed and yeah uh, some flying um, weapons here but the top two are are good I can tell they are good um, they're a, a little bit less um, blurry I think uh, if I zoom it a bit yeah so both of these lauras are good um, but I kind of I'm kind of inclined to tell that the second version I like better so that's it for today uh, we created our character Laura and uh, as you see it is not that difficult uh, and uh, you of course can create uh, Lauras for not just uh, movie characters but for literally everyone and everything uh, you can create Laura of yourself and you can create uh, Lauras for objects or for styles whatever you want so uh, do not hesitate experimenting try different things play with configurations 
and let me know in the comments below the video how it goes. So thank you for watching my video, I hope it was interesting for you and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you.